Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a Sephora haul update. So about two months ago, which I can't even believe it's been two months since that haul video, but I did a Sephora haul and I showed you guys just a bunch of high-end makeup. So today I'm back just sharing with you guys products that I think are worth it, products that I think were like, eh, that you could pass on. So basically just like hits and misses from that Sephora haul. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully it is helpful. I feel like especially if you're gonna be spending like your hard-earned money on high-end makeup, it better be worth it. So, hope you guys like it, and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start off with the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Pore Definer Primer. Pore Refiner Primer. Um, so I was really excited about this because I heard so many people in the past talking about this primer, and I really actually like it. However, there's a dupe out there for it. The dupe is from BH Cosmetics. It's the Pro Studio Primer. It literally is the same exact thing as this, but this primer is really good. Just a couple claims that it has, minimizes the look of pores, absorbs oil, mattifies shine. I agree with all of those except the mattifying part. I don't think this really mattifies your skin. I think it's just meant to be a pore primer and it's really good. It does a really good job at smoothing out your face, giving you a nice canvas for your foundation and everything just glides on the face. So I really do like it. This has a really nice smell as well, which I really enjoy. But again, the BH Cosmetics one, it does the same exact thing, you guys. I'm going to be doing a dupes video for you guys very soon, an updated one, so be on the lookout for that. But that one, the consistency of it is the same when you have it on your face. It's the same, like, it's the same exact thing. It's crazy. I'll show you guys in an upcoming video, like, them side by side, because it's the same thing. But this one is really good, but the BH one is a better alternative because it's cheaper. Next up I have a Smashbox Primer Water. Didn't have really high hopes for this primer either, but when I, the more that I used it, the more that I was actually really impressed with it. I could really notice a difference with my foundation. I found that whenever I would spray my face before and then after my makeup, everything just kind of looked like my skin. Like my foundation wasn't really cakey, it didn't cake up around my nose, it just looked absolutely stunning. So this for me is an A+. I'm actually going to go out and get the big bottle because I have like a little tiny bit left, but I really really like this if you ever have trouble with your foundation just looking really powdery throughout the day definitely try this out or just something that will kind of refresh your face before and after you have on makeup that way you don't get that powdery cakey gross looking look so this one's really good NYX has a really good one as well so check them out but for me this gets an A plus in my book I do think it's worth it it also has a really nice smell which is a plus so love that then I'm sorry I don't mean to like speed through the products I just get on such long rants with the video I don't want it to drag on on. I just want to tell you guys why I love the product, why I don't, and move on. Next I have the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation. I really wanted to love this foundation. Casey Holmes loved this foundation and I was like, I had really high hopes for it, but I hated this foundation, you guys. I hated it. I got it in the shade 2.2. It oxidizes like crazy on me. Like, I thought the shade was like really like a great match and then an hour later my face is legit orange. Like, it's orange. I really love the packaging of it, love the pump. It actually looks beautiful on the skin. It's just so light coverage. You have to build it up so much to get a decently medium coverage. For me, I'd rather just go out to the drugstore and get a BB cream for that. Like, I'm not going to spend all this money for a light coverage foundation. You know what I mean? So you're using so much product, I feel like, to get not even a really good medium coverage look. It's just not worth it, in my opinion. I feel like this is a good foundation maybe if you have really good skin. Like, no pimples, absolutely nothing, and you just want something to kind of even out your skin tone and just give you a very natural look, then this is a good foundation, but if you want something medium to full coverage, mm -mm, this is, does not do it for me. Like, I tried it with a beauty blender, I tried it with a brush, so many different foundation brushes, and it just was not giving me the coverage that I was looking for. So for me, this is a no-go. Then I have a concealer. This is the Smashbox Studio Skin 24 Hour Waterproof Concealer. I have this one in the shade Light Medium. This concealer, I like it, but I don't love it. The Tarte Shape Tape and Too Faced Born This Way are still like my two favorite high-end concealers. I feel like this is a good concealer, but it's not like mind-blowing to the point where I feel like you absolutely need it in your life. Like if you want a good concealer, get the Tarte Shape Tape or Too Faced Born This Way. This one has really nice, like lightweight feel to the face. It's like a medium coverage. It blends out really nice. It's creamy but I prefer the other two in my opinion so again I like it but I don't like love it next I have the cover effects custom enhancer drops in the shade celestial these are so beautiful if you want just like a really intense beaming highlight these are really good to put on underneath of your powdered highlight so I'll usually like apply my foundation and then I'll put these right in the tops of my cheekbones and then I'll like set my face apply my highlighter and it looks beautiful like just so stunning very very beaming so if you're not into like a beaming glowy look you're not gonna like these but if you are 
these are amazing these are like the pinky version um, they have like two other shades I think or three other ones but I like these because they are the lightest ones and I wasn't really into pinky highlighters for a long time but this one is so beautiful on the face it really just takes your highlighter to the next level so love it I love the droplet thing because I feel like you can save a lot of product so even though this is very pricey I do think it's worth it because a little bit goes a long way it is just Stunning. Next I have the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I love this powder. It does give flashback in photography, so if you're going out to an event or something, I would not recommend it because I did test it out and girl, your eyes look crazy white. So don't use it in flash photography, but if you just want a really nice translucent powder for every single day to really brighten up your under eye, this is for you. I love it because it really does brighten the area up. I have really dark circles and it's really hard for me to find products that like I feel like truly work for my under eye but this one is really really good so my favorite way to apply this is just applying it on the lid taking my damp beauty blender or sponge and just applying it with the sponge and it just gives such a flawless look with my concealer so this bomb.com so worth it and I've used it a lot and I still have so much product left so that's why I do feel like high-end makeup sometimes it is worth the money because you get so much product that in the long run it's worth it. Alright, next up I have a blush. This is the Becca Mineral Blush in the shade Songbird. This blush is stunning, you guys. I don't think I've ever tried such a luxurious formula with a blush. So long wearing, so beautiful on the face. It just is the perfect shade, I think, for every single day. It's like a peachy kind of deeper coral color. And the formula just glides on and goes on so smooth on the face. I want to definitely purchase more Becca blushes. Even though they're so small, a little bit goes a long way. Like you tap your brush and you literally have to tap off the excess because that's how pigmented it is. So this shade is just stunning like I feel like it would look good with so many different skin tones because of the color I feel like even if you're super pale you can totally get away with wearing this color it is just so beautiful I use it so much it's definitely like one of my go-to blushes because it goes with like every makeup look it's oh so pretty next up I have a highlighter this is the makeup forever profusion highlighter in the shade zero one this one as you can see it's like a really light pinky highlighter again going with that pinky theme I wasn't like a huge fan of shades like this but now I'm like really into colors like this this one is so pretty you guys I feel like if you have pale skin tone this is gonna be really stunning on you because it's not too pinky on the cheeks when you have it it's almost like a really light duochrome shade like when you have it on you can kind of like move your head and you see like different shades of this pink on your face it is just so gorgeous on the skin when you actually apply it on your finger it's pigmented but it doesn't feel super smooth it feels a little bit powdery and dry but when you actually take your brush and apply it it's like BAM like it's like in your face beaming highlighter so if you don't like a really intense glow you're not gonna like this highlighter because let me tell you it is intense but one of my favorite things about it is that it doesn't have any shimmer or glitter in it. It just gives you an intense glow. And I loved it so much that I actually went out recently, like about a couple weeks ago, and I bought the shade 02. And this one is a bit more of a gold color. Let me tell you, this Profusion highlighter, both of these are my two new favorite high-end highlighters. Like, you guys know I love Champagne Pop, but I don't know. I feel like this is like like to the next level highlighter like this is intense I feel like the gold would look so good if you have like a medium or tan skin tone or even like a darker skin tone oh my gosh it would be so amazing so I mean I'm pale and I still wear it but I love golds on like tanner skin tones I think it looks beautiful what else do I have okay Anastasia contour kit in the shade light to medium I actually like this contour kit I will say I still think Kat Von D and Lorac are like my two favorites when it comes to contour kits. I don't know what it is, but I love the powders in those a little bit more than these, um, like the powders for underneath your eyes. Those are so brightening, and they are just so smooth and creamy. I mean, so are these, but those just brighten up my under eyes so much more than these. I do like the palette, but I don't think it's like life-changing. Like, I don't think you absolutely need to have this palette in your life. If you want to splurge on a good one, I would try out Lorac or Kat Von D because I don't know what it is about those two, but I always go back to those contour kits. So again, this one's good, but it's not like mind-blowing. Eh, like it's a good palette but it's not like amazing you know what I mean next up I have the Tartlet in Bloom palette I had very low expectations for this like very low I didn't think I was gonna like this palette I was actually gonna return it when I first got it because I was like this palette looks so basic like it just looks like another neutral palette that I'm probably not even gonna use or I'm gonna end up giving away because that usually what happens or I'm gonna return it that's what I said to myself but 
the tables have turned. I love this palette. I've been using it so much, like nonstop. I just did a tutorial with it. I think it's just a really beautiful everyday palette that if you like colors like this that are just like neutral, then you're going to love this palette. A couple people have been asking me if I prefer this one or the Anastasia Modern Renaissance. I still like the Modern Renaissance only because I love warm tone shades and like pinky orangey shades but if you don't like colors like that and you like neutral shades then get this one you know what I mean it really just depends on the type of colors that you like and your personal preference so it's all about preference in this case but I love this palette like I love it the shades are really easy to blend and it smells like chocolate it smells just like the Too Faced uh, chocolate bar palette which I didn't think any other makeup companies did that but this one blew me away. Then I have the Tardis Pro Palette by Tarte. I was actually most excited about this in my entire haul. This is what I was looking forward to. I actually thought I was going to keep this palette and return this one. And the tables have turned. I actually want to return this palette because I do not like this at all. I really tried to love it. All the times that I did use it, I was just like, ugh, like I want to just like give this palette away. Like I do not like it at all. It was so dry, the shadows. And even though they do come off like pigmented, they were so hard to blend, you guys. I noticed that the more that you layered the matte shades over top of each other, the harder it was to blend. I don't know what it is, but the formula of these is just dry like not good at all super hard to blend I love the concept of it I love all the shades in here I think it's a beautiful palette but the quality of it is just not up to par in my opinion for the price I also really was excited about these uh, shimmery shades I thought they were going to be like duochrome like really intense like almost like glittery pigments on the eyes and they're just shimmery eyeshadows like they're just nothing special so again I feel like for your money I thought it was worth it, but the quality just for me is not, makes the palette not worth it. So if you're looking for a really good palette, I would go with this one. Even though this one has more colors in it, the quality of this one is 10 times better than this one. So for me, the Tardis Pro was a no-go. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, I have the Kat Von D Liquid Lipsticks. I actually really love these. I will say that they're not extremely long wearing. Like if you eat something, they're going to come off and you're going to get that butthole lip and you're going to get that ring in your mouth if you layer these. So they're really good. I love the colors of them, but just keep in mind you will have to like touch up throughout the day um, if you do have them, but I do like the colors. So my favorite shade definitely is Bow and Arrow and I also have Lolita. So I feel like once you layer, I, with any liquid lipstick, if you layer it too much, it can crumble and you're going to get that ring. So I would keep maybe the layers to this liquid lipstick probably like one, one really good layer or two max. If not, it's going to start coming off and it's just not going to look cute. So that is what they look like right there. So again, bow and arrow and Lolita. Alright guys, so that does complete this Sephora haul update. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you've tried any of these products down below, what your thoughts are on them. Let me know if some new makeup that you guys have tried out, maybe some new things that I need to go try out. Let me know in the comments. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your continued support. I appreciate all of you, and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!